Hello guys and welcome back again to my channel. Today we will cover a game from round 3 of the Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis. And it's the game between Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, and American Grandmaster, Hans Niemann. So without further introduction, let's see what happened in this game. Magnus Carlsen is playing with white and he opens with d4. Hans Niemann goes knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and Niemann here decides to play in the Nimzo Indian defense and he goes bishop to b4. And here white has a lot of tries, but by far the main two male lines is queen to c2 and e3. But here Magnus decides to play a side line so that maybe he can surprise his opponent. Here white goes g3, short castle, bishop to g2, d5, e3, bishop capture on c3, b capture on c3, and now d capture on c4. Magnus here goes knight to f3, c5, short castle, c capture on d4, queen capture on d4, and now knight to c6. The queen here is attacked, so queen capture on c4, and now e5. Black here is intending to develop his bishop on e6 and gain a tempo on the queen. And Magnus here goes bishop to g5, h6 by black, and now rook on f to d1. And here Hans Niemann finds a very good move, he plays bishop to e6. Now both queens are attacked, but the problem is that there isn't a good way for white to avoid the queen trade. For example, if you go queen to a4, now queen to a5. And c3 pawn is attacked. So queen capture on a5, knight capture on a5, bishop capture on f6, g capture on f6, and now the e5 pawn is defended, and the black has this lovely outpost on the c4 square, and he can immediately challenge for the open d5. And here already black is slightly better. So in the game Magnus captured on d8, bishop capture on c4, rook capture on a8, and rook capture on a8, bishop capture on f6, and g capture on f6. King to f1 by Magnus, trying to get his king closer to the center. Rook to d8, king to e1, intending to challenge for the open d5. Hans Niemann here goes knight to a5, intending to draw back his bishop and uh, put his knight on this lovely outpost on c4. And Magnus goes rook to d1. Rook to c8, avoiding the trade of rooks and also adding pressure on the c3 pawn. And now knight to d2. Bishop to e6, and now c4. The c3 pawn was very weak, so Magnus decided to give it anyway. But here, if you capture with your knight, after knight captures, rook captures, now the b7 pawn is not defended. And after something like rook to c3, rook to d3, rook capture on d3, e capture on d3, we reach a position with equal pawns, and black has these doubled pawns, and here white is slightly better. So here Neyman makes the right capture, and he captures with his bishop. Knight capture on c4, and rook capture on c4. And the point here is that the knight is defending the b7 pawn. Rook to d8 check, king to g7, Bishop to d5 attacking the rook, rook to c7, and now rook to a8, a6, rook to b8, and now f5. Black here is intending to play e4 and maybe e3 if he's allowed, and also the b7 pawn is well defended, and the rook here on b8 is not doing that much. So Magnus here decides to activate his rooks, and he goes rook to e8, e4, and now g4, rook to c5 attacking the bishop, and now bishop to a2, knight to c4, and here white has a chance to capture this knight. And he should have done it, for example, here after you capture the knight, rook captures, g capture on a5, and now b5. Of course, here black is still has these two pawns against one on the queen side, but also it's a rook and game, and this would have given white the most chances to draw this game. But here Magnus misses this chance and he goes a4. Hans Niemann immediately removes his knight and he goes knight to d6, rook to e7, and now f capture on g4, rook to d7, and now e3. And this is actually a very nice trap. Here, if white captures the knight, after rook to c1, rook to d1, no black will exchange rooks. And after e capture on f2, black will simply make a new queen and he will win the game. So Magnus here captures on e3, and now knight to e4. Black now is threatening rook to c1 check, so Magnus removes his king. Rook to c1, king to g2, rook to c2, bishop capture on b7, and rook capture on e2. King to g1. And here Hans decides to repeat the position once. Rook to e1 check, king to g2, rook to e2 check, and king to g1. King to f6, black now removes his king from the pen on the seventh rank, and now bishop to d5. Rook to d2, and of course you can't capture because of this pen. So Magnus decides to give a check on f7, king to g6, and now rook to d7. And this was another mistake. Here white should have gone for the rook endgame after rook to f4, rook capture on d5, Rook capture on e4, and of course black is still has these two pawns versus one, and he's a pawn up, but this would have given white the most drawing chances of course. So if we go to what happened in the game after rook to d7, knight to g5, 
بيشوف اف 7 تشيك كينج تو اف 5 روك كابشن دي 2 نيت تو اف 3 تشيك كينج تو جي 2 اند كينج كابشن دي 2 ماجنس هير جوز اي 5 تراين تو فيكس ذيس تو بونز اند اولسو وايت هير هاز ذا تشيك اوف بلاين بيشوب تو دي 5 اند جوين افتر ذا بي 7 بون سو هانس نيمان هير جوز ويز هيز كينج تو اي 5 كينج تو جي 3 نيت تو اف 1 تشيك كينج تو اف 2 نيت كابشن اف 2 اي 4 باي ماجنس كينج كابشن اي 4 اند نو بيشوب تو اي 6 White now is intended to put his bishop on c8 and try to go after the queenside pawns, but now simply king to f4, bishop to c8, and now a lot of moves win. For example, you can play h5, g3, but Neiman goes for the most simple way, and he goes knight to f3. And the point here is that after bishop capture on b7, knight to e5, bishop capture on a6, now you have the move knight to c6, and the pawn will draw. Magnus goes bishop to b7, knight capture on a5, and now bishop to d5. And now we reach a totally winning position for black. The only problem is that the knight is controlled by the bishop. So the way to proceed here is to simply try to kick this bishop away. And after your knight joins the game, the end game of course will be winning. But the problem now if you go king to e5 immediately, this will become a draw. After king to g3, king capture on d5, king capture on g4, the pawns will just drop. For example here knight to c4, king to h5, King to e6, and this is just a draw. So here Neyman first go pawn to h5, bishop to f7, h4, bishop back to d5, and now that we have controlled the g3 square, now you can play king to e5. And it was in this position when Magnus resigned, as there isn't much you can try anymore. Here, for example, after bishop to a8, the knight will simply join the game, and this is just lost. Now I should mention that after Hans Neyman won this game, now he has managed to reach twin 700 in classical chess and also managed to stop Magnus Carlsen's unbeaten streak of 53 games. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell to get our latest videos. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.